Good evening, everybody. I'm Patrick Christie's. I'm in for Dan Watson this evening. And tonight, we've got an action-packed show for you. Was All right, well, from right now with me to respond to this is my superstar panel, broadcaster and commentator Emma Webb, political commentator and Conservatives Against Racism co-founder Albie Amancona and UK lead at Young Voices, Jason Reid. Fantastic stuff. Well, Emma, yes, indeed. Now, Jason, uh, Emma made a, a point there about Boris Johnson appearing to be freewheeling. Now, at times, well, now, really, it has looked as though, although credit where credit's due, in my opinion anyway, he seems to have stood firm, at least for now, but he's not always appeared that he's had a grip, has he? Do you think he has got a grip? He's lost his grip a long time ago. I wish I could agree with what you said in your intro there, that he's rediscovered his libertarian <laughs> roots. He's just making it up as he goes along. Uh, the marathon cabinet meeting that they had, it seems the pressure was a little bit too much when it came to introducing restrictions over Christmas, so he delayed it. But as you say, we're due some avalanche of restrictions any day now as we head into January anyway. I didn't like the fact that all the many of the newspaper front pages this morning were hailing Boris as mm. saving us from Christmas lockdown, but he was the one who created that threat in the first place. And now he mm. swooped in and he did that video where he was victoriously saying, don't worry, you don't have to cancel your plans. You're welcome, folks. Well, hang on a minute. He was the one who created that threat to begin with, and now we're supposed to be grateful that he mm. hasn't locked us down over Christmas? It's it is a classic move, isn't it, politically, actually, to create a kind of straw man and then knock it down and be the hero. Can I just point out, and I hope you don't mind, no. your nails are fantastic. The most festive nails. Can we get a close-up? Hey, hey look at that. There we are. <laughs> fantastic <laughs> stuff. So at least someone's made an effort this evening. Come on. <laughs> on I'm concerned, Jason, that, that I copped it a bit, actually, yesterday, um, when I, I played a clip during one of my uh, monologues, which was uh, of the people at the Dart singing some very unscrupulous things about Boris Johnson, people at the football as well. People going, oh, you can't base it off uh, drunk people. You know, and yeah, fair enough, OK, you can't base it off drunk <laughs> people. However, these are the people who Boris Johnson was supposed to kind of tickle the belly of, wasn't it? Your average man and woman on the street, the kind of people who would like to go for a pint with him. And if he's lost the dressing room with those kinds of people, I dare say that a lot of people at the darts might have voted for Boris, actually. Mm -hmm. And if they're not there anymore, that's a problem, I think, isn't it? It is a problem, but I, I think Boris will be there for a while. He seems to have this amazing ability that nothing sticks to him. His approval ratings right now are uh, about as low as Theresa May's were a month before she was forced out of office. And yet we've heard very few stories of mm. um, Conservative MPs actually writing letters to the 1922 committee. Graham Brady's accepting emails now, apparently, as well. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. moving with the times, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> it's a modern, it's a modern, a modern <laughs> conservative party. But no, go on. Do you, do you think it's a problem that he's lost the dressing room, maybe? It's, it's becoming more of a problem, but I, I struggle to see a point at which he actually gets forced out. He's got that huge majority. He's still riding the wave of the fact that he delivered Brexit. The pandemic will be over soon and he will get a boost from the mm. fact that our freedoms will come back permanently, we hope, fingers mm. crossed. Uh, I don't see him losing the next election if he makes it that far. I think all, in all likelihood he'll be there for seven to eight years at least. I would like to be proven wrong. Um, I don't think the January lockdown will be the end of Boris, but I think if the May elections go as badly as North Shropshire did, that'll be a huge problem for him. Cool. I wish it would be the end of him, but I, I'm oh. not optimistic <laughs> about it. Could you vote for Keir Starmer? <laughs> Do you know, I, I think I'd be tempted for the first time ever to, yeah. to move. Do you also Horrible. enjoy going, you know, curtain shopping at B&Q on a Sunday? <laughs> <it's> that. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfair. He is, of course, a nice chap. Uh, but anyway, right, thank you very much. We will, we will continue. We'll return to all of this. Uh, yeah, well, allegedly. Because isn't there some truth to the claim that the only reason that these people set sail in what are quite often very flimsy dinghies, because they do so in the knowledge that 99 times out of 100, our Coast Guard will pick them up? The primary issue has to be people's safety. Nobody deserves to uh, be stuck in an inflatable raft in the channel and find themselves drowning. I can't imagine how desperate you have to be to clamber into one of those obviously unsafe uh, rafts, having given probably all your life savings to a people smuggler in order to have that privilege in the first place. The part of this um, investigation that I don't like is the fact that the French and British uh, Coast Guards are being lumped together. It seems to me the French carry a lot more responsibility <laughs> than the Great. British do. There was one um, one particular day where they, they stopped as few as 8% of uh, the boats uh, from leaving the shore to begin with. And yeah. most days it's it's a very low figure as well. But, They're just not doing enough to fight the but case, if, 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 if the two survivors from the disaster say they, they put out calls to both the British and French Coast Guards, and neither responded, then they're both equally responsible, aren't they? I think it was in French waters, though, from what we can gather. But that's not the point. If they no. put distress calls out to both coast guards and neither of them helped, aren't both of them equally responsible? Doesn't it depend whose waters they're in? 
I think that's disputed. I think both claim that it was the other's waters. There was obviously exactly. some confusion. And, and also, I wasn't there. Obviously. This is why I think we can all be in agreement that it's a good yeah. thing to have an investigation yeah, exactly. to the bottom yeah. of it. Going to give you first dibs on the next one. All right. So the government have been behaving like a bunch of jokers recently. What with their enactment of Plan B and threats of cancelling Christmas yet again. So perhaps we shouldn't be surprised by Sajid Javid attempting to spread some festive cheer as well as potentially booster propaganda with a bizarre and some might say Trumpian use of memes. So the health secretary borrowed a clip by the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health riffing on the Christmas classic Home Alone in which of course Kevin McAllister represents the vaccine fighting off Omicron and Delta depicted as the wet bandage. I think we can have a look at it now can we? Don't worry, Marv, I'll get him for you. I mean, look, it's got us talking about it, Jason, hasn't it? I suppose it's done its job. <laughs> It has, but Sajid Javid could do, do anything and we'd talk about it. He's a very interesting guy, isn't he? You can't have Oh, he's, he's great at parties, I imagine. I'm sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Sajid is there. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> we'll be here for hours now. <laughs> now go on, Gary. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a good thing he's tweeted out? He obviously means well, but this is representative of the kind of infantilising nanny statism that we have in government. He thinks we're kids. He, it's, it comes across to me like a cool vicar, the sort of, <laughs> do you know who else is interested in rap music? <laughs> Jesus. You know, just don't. Just we we all know don't what a vaccine care. is. We all know what a booster is. We don't need the government to talk down to us like this. All right. Well, look. I'm sorry. We haven't got time to allow you both to uh, to, to come into that. But I think I think you summed it up rather well, in my opinion. Anyway, there we go. Like your uh, your rap music analogy. Anyway, listen, man. Uh, fat people cost the NHS a lot of money, don't they? <laughs> they do cost the NHS a lot of money, actually, uh, to the tune of 4.2 billion pounds a year. And I think the official st statistics are that 63% of UK adults are obese. You're not obese, by the Thank way. Thank you very much. I was waiting for that. It took uh, a while, but yeah, <laughs> we got there in the end. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I, think, I think I do actually agree with Emma on this. I'm, I'm not sure that having um, warnings on a packet of sweets is going to stop someone buying a mm. packet of sweets. If I want a packet of sweets, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. Um, so I think we need to look at other ways of how to solve the obesity crisis, the more effective public health approach. This is too much. Jason, your views? Fat people do cost the NHS money, but so do people who play sports because they keep pulling their hamstrings and twisting their ankles. I love that logic. I love that no logic. One, no one's done that, Tally. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah it's about time we had the truth. You know, go on. <laughs> we pay into the NHS just like everyone else does. We have just as much of a right to use it as everyone else does. This is exactly as you were saying, Emma. This is infantilising nonsense. Nobody's bamboozled by the fact that chocolate has sugar in it. Um, and yeah. it's just emblematic of this miserable worldview that you're just trying to enjoy... Mm -hmm. You know, a nice piece of cake or something, and someone pokes their head over your shoulder. Have you thought about the diabetes risk with that? Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's nothing no. wrong with a bit of cake either. Everything in moderation is good. Yeah, well, Everything well, in where, moderation. Where do you stand, Jason, on, on the fact that we do have warnings on cigarette packages? We don't even have branding now on cigarette packages, just someone with a tumour normally. So where do you stand on that? Should we not have that, do you think? Well, the, the data shows in various case studies around the world that people quit smoking when they want to quit smoking, yeah. when they have access to the tools to quit smoking, um, that the NHS provides very well, and that they don't quit smoking because they've learned for the first time that smoking is harmful mm. by seeing it on a cigarette packet. Uh, exactly as you were saying, Emma, this is a libertarian thing, right? Mm. Boris Johnson used to call himself libertarian. Yeah. He used to talk about Britain as a land day. of liberty. When he was elected to the Tory leadership in 2019, he talked about the need to roll back the continuing creep of the nanny state, uh, and now he's a completely different person. I think the turning point was when he got COVID himself um, and he put a lot of that down to his weight. And then he thinks the rest of us need help to lose weight, even though he didn't, which doesn't, I don't follow the logic there. No. Uh, but he just needs to leave us I alone. I think if you cut him open, he'd just be four fifth wheel of cheese and some pork. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, uh, opinion. Now, Jason, go on, hit me, you greatest Briton. My nominee is Liz Truss, because reportedly during that uh, million hour cabinet meeting that they had this week, uh, it seems that she was one of the people who was standing up for Christmas and standing up for freedom over Christmas. Um, we were, we, I think a lot of us had that sinking feeling where it seemed like Boris was priming himself to uh, rerun last year and introduce mm. step two or tier four or whatever we're calling the restrictions this time round. Um, but it seems that Liz Truss was one of the people who stood up and prevented that from happening, at least for the time being. OK, Jason, your go. I felt absolutely spoiled for choice with all the different authorities who are going out of their way to make our lives miserable by panicking about 
Omicron and causing all kinds of economic and mental health uh, issues by introducing new restrictions. I went in the end with the Northern Ireland authorities today who decided to um, close nightclubs in the name of fighting Omicron, but it could have been a million others. It could have been Mark, Gre Mark Drake well, put yeah. in Wales, Nicola Sturgeon in Scotland. It's just my union jackass really is uh, panic over Omicron, so you can't. You can't not pick me, no. It's going to be very difficult for me to, to choose between these ones, actually. I must say, they, they are, thank you very, very much. I must say, I've had an absolute rip roarer of a show today. And thank you so much, everyone who's been tuning in. My wonderful panel, Emma, Albie and Jason. Great to have you on the show. I must say, let's do it again very, very soon, all of you. So thank you, everyone, of course. Who